Let's get into our weekly marker review, which I know is a few days late, but that's because of the holiday. And the holiday I'm talking about is Memorial Day, where Tom Cruise had his biggest movie opening ever. I still gotta see it. I gotta see Top Gun 2. I'm going next weekend. I actually saw Top Gun 1 for the first time this past weekend. I don't know how I missed it. It was good. It was uh, maybe too much of a love story for me between Tom Cruise and this lady who basically looked like his mom, but also between Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer. They're always just real sweaty and staring at each other and just playing volleyball. A lot of undertones in that movie that I guess didn't get through in the 80s, but I see it now. But anyway, with markets, we got some good news, but also we got a warning because you got to be careful here. Can't get too excited like watching Tom Cruise play volleyball if you're Val Kilmer. But let's jump into the data and see what's going on. And as always, we're using our research from MacroOps, our global macro research and consulting firm. So in last week's video, we started talking about how it was a good time to actually start buying in the market because we may have seen a bit of a tradable bottom. And sure enough, what happened? Yeah, we got that miniature bottom right here and things started to turn around. But the thing we got to remember is that it's a tradable bottom within a larger sideways volatile regime, meaning that even though this is a bottom, it may only be a temporary bottom. And that's where the trap comes in. But we should now see a couple of weeks at least of upside from here. Remember, this could very well be like what happened here, where we went up and then back down again. So it's important to size accordingly. And what I mean by that is don't go all into the market 100% just yet. Layer in slowly with the understanding that the market could turn again. And we'll talk about that more in a few minutes. And I'll show you how we're doing it. But Alex kind of called the bottom on May 24th. He said we bottom today. Not calling for a long-term bottom. We think we're in a year-long sideways volatile regime. But it is a tradable bottom. Yields were coming in. Credit was being bid even while equities are getting trashed. And remember, the thing about credit markets is that they lead equity markets. So if you look at the price of junk bonds and where they're going, or at least that ETF, you kind of see what the risk appetite really is. Now that was not a popular tweet. On that video last week that I made in every recent video, there's one guy who keep commenting on these videos. That's not a bottom, you millennial trader. And I didn't know the term millennial trader was so offensive, but now, now I'm offended. Because you guys know I like to complain just like a boomer. Don't call me a millennial. This is the age I'm looking forward to, the Frank and everybody loves Raymond. I'm looking for those Jerry Stiller adventures. I am thoroughly excited to be an old man. Don't call me a millennial. But yeah, people weren't happy. But it's like Walter Diemer says, when it's time to buy, you will not want to. And can you really blame people? People have been beaten up so bad over this past year, including myself. It gets tough to get back into the market. And that's why we always talk about having a system because process trumps emotions. Even when you're feeling bad and you don't wanna buy, if your process says get back in, then you get back in. You can't trust your emotions in the market because Mr. Market is specifically there to toy with your emotions. He will gaslight you left and right, whatever gaslighting means, I did, you still don't know. But it's bad and it's emotionally manipulative. So you wanna keep your emotions out of it. And again, we'll talk about our process in a second here. But you're already getting a glimpse when we do these videos each week. Moving on, here's some highlights from Bank of America's latest report. We currently have the most oversold assets relative to the 200 day moving average, meaning we are vulnerable to a tradable bounce, just like we've been talking about. And we've also reached peak bearishness in the market. And we got the peak inflation narrative here. And finally, people are thinking, hey, maybe the Fed won't raise so fast because things are so bad. And what do we know about sentiment? sentiment in the market. When people are getting so bearish and so negative, that's actually good. That's when you're going to get the bottom and when the market is going to turn around. And like we just said, or what Walter Diemer just said, when it's time to buy, you're not going to want to. So it's actually a signal when you don't want to buy that it might be time to buy. And I've seen some other comments on the channel saying, no, I'm not touching anything that you're talking about, AK, because this is still a bear market, which might be true. Like we said, this might only be a temporary bottom, but that's why you hedge. That's why you put a little bit in and you keep stacking on that and you control your risk, the most important thing. Because if you're trading the stock market, you got to take chances, right? Otherwise, you'd never get back into the market. But the way to do it is in a safe way so that if the market does turn around after you get in, you cut your risk off. So a big thing that happened is the Bank of America's bull and bear indicator crashed to 0.6 from 1.5. So if you remember last week, this was at 1.5 and now it's at 0.6. So it's extreme, extreme bearishness. And again, we know how sentiment works. This is a big buy signal. You can see another way to look at it here. This blue line keeps falling into the extreme bear levels. That's a sign to buy. We also got some major bullish thrusts in the McClellan oscillator index, all while the summation is coming off deeply oversold lows. So time will tell, but this is looking a lot like our last previous major bottoms. 
So you can see these green cylinders here marking every time this oscillator turned around, the market turned around too. And once again, it's happening right here. So again, like we said, this may or may not be the major bottom. We don't think it is, but there is some data that points towards that, hey, maybe. But we do think for sure it's at least a short-term durable bottom. So it's a tradable one where you could buy, as I've said a million times. And we also finally saw around a positive confirming breath thrust. That's another thing we talk about every week, right? Not just sentiment, but also we want to see breath in the market. Strong breath, good smelling breath. We want all the stocks moving up together because that's what creates a healthy market. You don't want just a few ones propping everything up because of the way the indices are weighted and whatnot. You want everything moving together. So we finally got our three consecutive 80% plus up volume days with 90% of stocks above their 10 day moving average. And that's exactly what you wanna see to see a bottom. And you kinda see that, right? 25th, 26th, 27th, real strong days. That was the key signal right there. Small cap valuations are now at their great financial crisis lows. So 2008 lows. So another signal that they've overcorrected and are ready to bounce. Also, China is opening up again. So that's gonna bring an additional bid to oil and energy stocks, which is good for our macro ops portfolio because that's where most of our book is concentrated. Biotech has been in one of the worst bear markets in its history. This recent sell-off has brought XBI down to its 18 and 20 bear market lows. Now for May, and we're looking at the monthly chart here, the index put in a small reversal, which puts the odds in favor that this support level holds. After this massive correction, as you can see here, yeah, that would make sense. And one of the stocks we're looking at is Clearpoint Neuro, CLPT. This is a chart of the monthly right here, and you can see it's bottoming out. And here's just an example of a real nice bottom. Bottom. And we're looking at a monthly chart here, right? But you see how you basically have a floor right here. You have wicks going below that floor, but you have the actual thing closing at or above it. That's how you know it's the floor and the base is happening. And the longer the base is, the more stronger a breakout will be. So what is this right here? It's one, two, three, four, five. It's a five month base. And every month that it continues to base like this, the stronger the base will be. But five months is already a very long time. So you can see it break out from here. Now, if we look at it on a closer scale, this is the day Daily, you do want to see it break out before you get in. So if I was looking at this just casually, I'd say the breakout point is right around there. What is that? 1178. So if you see it break that point, you could get in because this is that long term five month base that we were talking about. Now, if you want to be extra safe, you'll want to see it break this 200 day moving average too. And honestly, the way these things work is that by the time it's near breaking out from this level right here, this imaginary line we drew, and it's not imaginary, really what it is, is it's supply and demand, right? Clearly, there's a level of supply right here that people end up selling at. And that's why you'll see the price hit that level and come back down, hit that level, come back down. Here again, it could hit the level, come back down. If there's selling pressure there, if there's people who want to like get rid of the stock. And when it breaks that level, that's what's telling you that, hey, the weak hands are gone. That selling pressure is gone. And now you have more demand that's going to push things up. So the reason I say you could potentially wait for the 200 day moving average too, is because that's in another area where we tend to see some selling pressure. If someone bought at the 200 day moving average, they're like, oh, let me sell right there again, even though this thing has traced down. So back to what I was saying, what tip happens is that while you're waiting for this to break out, this 200 day will come and kiss this level. And then you'll have a double resistance right there. You'll have this line plus the 200 day. And when that breaks, then you have an even stronger support at that level because you have the 200 day and the pattern. And again, it's not voodoo, it's just supply and demand because you're just reading the supply and demand levels on a 2D chart. It's nothing more than that. You're reading what people are doing with their money and then trading based off that. Moving on, another stock we're looking at is Diana Shipping, DSX. It's broken out of a seven year base. So this chart right here is a monthly chart. This is a massive, massive base. The company has been buying back shares and it has a strong balance sheet and it's seeing solid top line growth and it trades for five times next year's earnings. So it's very cheap. This is another one you could add to your watch list and you can see the breakout has already happened. Now in these videos, I generally talk about two different portfolios that we have, or I say two different strategies. We have the macro op strategy, which is the global macro trading. And I'd say it's the more complicated strategy and more discretionary. 
Then we have the fallible strategy, which is more of a system. It's completely automated. It's all quant based and much easier to execute because there is no discretion. You just follow the system. That's mostly what I talk about because that's the kind of trading I do. Alex does more of the discretionary macro. Both can be very successful. And the best thing is actually combining both of them. But what I want to talk about real quick is how we're trading this tradable bottom in our systematic fallible strategy. So if you look at the market right here, we're getting this tradable bottom, right? Well, in our fallible strategy, what we do is make a rotation on the first of every month. And what happens with our rotation is that we basically have an algorithm that scans the NASDAQ and gives us the top five highest momentum stocks. And every month we rotate into those top five stocks. That way we're always with the stocks that are moving higher the fastest and we're getting rid of the ones that have lost steam. Now this month we got a real nice entry point because the market is turning around while we're getting into some new stocks. And that's not necessarily planned with the system because the system it always rotates on the first of every month. Unless you know it's a weekend or a holiday then it'll rotate on the next day that the market is open. So if I had to bet you know I would think that we're probably going to do pretty well this month if we're catching this uptrend. Is it for sure? Of course not. But that's that's why we have our risk control in place. So whenever we get into a stock, what happens is that we set a stop point 15% below our entry price. That way, if the thing drops, we're out. And I know 15% may seem like a lot for some people, but the reason why we do that is to create less volatility in the portfolio. Because one of the problems, you know, when you set a stop and it's too close to your entry price, you just get knocked out. And a lot of times you get knocked out and the stock takes off without you. So in all the research and testing we've done, that 15% level works best for us. Now, like I said, this may only be a short term bottom, right? So how are we managing for that in our fallible system? Well, what we do is that once we're in the stock, we set a target 20% above the entry price. And once we hit that 20% level, so the stock is up 20% from where we entered, we sell a fourth of our position. Why do we do that? Well, exactly for the reason if the stock round trips, which oftentimes it does, it'll hit that 20% and then turn around, we took some profits off the table. And the other important thing that we do once we hit that first target, which is 20% above the entry price, we raise our stop. So originally when we get into the stock, we put a stop 15% below, right? Well, once we hit our first target, we bring that stop price up to break even. So now if we hit our first target and the thing turns around, we are going to sell it right when it gets back to that entry price. That way we are positive on the trade and we don't have a round tripper because round trippers are the worst, right? When you are actually winning and then you forget to sell and then it round trips on you. And not only do you lose all your profits, but you end up with the loss at the end of it. And I know that's happened to a lot of people in this last year because a lot of these tech stocks they just went up up and up and you look like an idiot if you sold anything until they crashed over 90 percent and they're still crashing like 15 percent in a day it's crazy but a lot of people learn their lesson about selling on the way up you rather have profits in your pocket than to sacrifice those profits for just a few more percentage points higher. What's that saying? Like a bird in your pocket is worth two in the bush? If you're a bird keeper or something or do you throw a stone in the bush or Two stones hits one bird, two birds, one cup. I don't know, but the point is, is that in the market, you're always gonna have paper profits until you sell and actually lock it in. So it's always important to take your profits on the way up. So I've seen this kind of thing play out before where we get lucky and our rotation is on the same day as the market is turning around and we magically start selling on the way up. And as we do, the market turns around again. And where most people get frustrated because everything they bought, they have to sell again. We're actually okay because we took profits on the way up and it works out way better. And we end up beating the average more and more and I'm talking about the index average because while it turns around we locked in those profits that's the risk control that we always talk about so as always if you want to learn more about that strategy that I'm talking about and see the rotation that we just did then make sure you take this training right here it'll go more into detail about everything I just talked about and how it works and why life is so much easier when you have a systematic process like this because like we said the rest of this year is probably going to be very volatile we're in this sideways regime the worst regime but this is where it really pays to have a system. So I'll put a link to this page right here. You go here, you enter your email address and you get into the training room and you get trained. And for those of you who've already taken the training, then make sure you watch the last video that we just did. It's about another stock that we're looking at that we're thinking about getting in. It's one we've been tracking for a long time. And I'll give you a hint what it is. It's this, this, this is the hint. What am I doing? Am I waving? Am I showing you that I have a hand, that I have fingers? Am I asking you to give me a high five? I don't know, I don't know. You're just gonna have to find out. You're gonna have to click this video right here and go watch that latest stock that we're looking at. It's looking good. It's a stock that I actually hate or a company that I hate, but that means it's probably gonna do even better. So if you're already taking the training, click this video and I will see you there.